Where do we put the uh, the light? The what? The light switch then. That's all up to you. Good. Unlike these ones which were built individually, we've decided to build this as one unit, screwed it into the wall so it doesn't move, uh, and it's nice and sturdy. We've also built all of these things, um, which we will now mesh, which we're going to do in a second, uh, and they act as the tops. So if you, if you imagine, oh, the shorter part here will be where the food trough goes, that's the open part at the back. Um, but that is very, very simple design, and now we just have to mesh all of these, and then attach them on the right place. But it's coming along nicely. Um, I've got Sufyan here helping me. Hello. And anyone who doesn't know who this is, it's my little brother. Um, so we are now, Jay's at work. We're gonna try and mesh all these before he gets back so that later on today, we can attach them all um, and have complete units. So just a quicker view. So the front part works as the food trough, the back part stays nice and open. Um, and then we just have to attach the runners so that the drawers open and close nicely. But yeah, almost there. Um, it's taken longer than we thought. That's just because of the delivery times, but let's get started. No, 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 it has to be pushed up against this. It's not pushed up against this, it's not the right measurement. So push, there you go. Push, there you go, now clamp it. So guys, it's done. Um, well, I say it's done, it's functional at least. So we have a few different things we've added since, you know, the last sort of build video. This is now full, we've got our first plants. What are these again, Joe? Some lemon ting. Some lemon ting. <laughs> lemon, lemon something or other. Apparently it keeps away mosquitoes and they smell nice. Uh, some lavender off the end. You obviously have to put a lot more plants in here. We also fitted the gutter system. Uh, and the gutter system literally leads to this pipe, which fills up Daffy's pond. And you can see it's nice and topped up. So as it rains, it consistently tops up his pond, basically, uh, which is a nice little addition. Stops me having to up, uh, uh, fill up his pond constantly, which there were a where was a period where I had to. Um, going into the actual shed itself. Get to the dash. We now have a barn door, as you can see. This stays open during the day, uh, and it just keeps, um, it keeps a nice airflow in here. 
coincide. We've now got the light fit. The only thing we've got left to do in here really is the hardboard to hide all the insulation. Uh, but that, that is just cosmetic and will get done um, at some point. Another little liquor coat probably on this floor, uh, just because obviously we did a lot of building in here, a lot of scuff work, etc. Um, and here is the main wrap wall. Uh, we haven't finished this last one. We were slightly short on wood. We will get it done and put a water system. You can see the water systems up here. They're actually 50 year rubs. That one's low because we were tinkering with the nipples earlier, uh, like the water nipples that they drink from. But the idea is 50 litre um, reservoirs, feed down into individual boxes, gets rid of all the need for um, water, bottles. water bottles, which are a nightmare. And each drawer has uh, three females and a male in it. Uh, and you can see they've got plenty of room in here. We used to keep five females and a male, uh, but we just felt once they get to full size, these tubs were just a little bit too small. On the top is obviously just their grill, the standard sort of feeding mechanism for them. Um, down here, I know we've got some girls with babies. Move Bell, move Missy. I know you want to say hello, but they might nip you in their nose. We've got some little babies in here. Um, being raised up by mums. So you got these guys, they're, hey, Bell, leave them be. No, no, you can't play with them. I know you want to play with them, but you can't. Uh, we've got more babies in this one. And you can see it's a little bit wet here. Um, in this corner, but that's because we were playing with the, with the watering system earlier just to get it refined. Uh, there was a few drips and leaks here and there because the pipe wasn't cut properly. Um, but now that that's sorted, we can clean them all out again and uh, start afresh. I'm holding back Belle who really wants to see them. But yeah, we just got like a load of my uh, a load of rat colonies here. So at the moment, there's 12 rat colonies. There are 36 tubs, so there will be 36 rat colonies eventually. Um, there's a couple like we use the board pens to just mark them. So for example, here I've got marked male and down there I've got marked male. So these are just surplus males. Obviously at the moment, we're not culling anything just yet. These males will be used to set up new colonies in these, um, some more males. What we, what we do is when the rats are um, of size, we'll wean them from parents. Uh, put them for now, the plan is to just bring them into groups like this. Tell me lovely. I just realized it's like mum, she's got the brown nose. And it's a boy. So it's a boy that looks like mum. Um, and essentially what we do is we raise them here individually, well, in groups um, of their litter mates. When they get to a certain size, we then start to split them. So those are actually all males up there. These are females from the same litter. Um, we'll split them like this. Uh, this I think is, yeah, this is a, a more recent um, brood, if you will, litter. Uh, which have just been weaned from parents and so are living in here. And when they get of size, we'll then split the females out, put the females into colonies, put in unrelated males. On this side, <clears throat> a lot of emptiness at the moment, <laughs> but that's because we really hacked down the mice colonies. So we had, what did we have originally? Six, 12, we had 10 mice colonies and two tubs to raise, like the um, grow on mice. We've cut that down right back to just uh, six colonies of mice that are, we, so we selected the best breeding mice colonies. Um, there's quite a few mice in some of these. This one's got a ridiculous number of mice, but that's because they have massive litters. So we're just waiting for these little diddy ones here. Get a little diddy one for the camera. But for these ones to get of a size that we can split them away from their parents um, and then they'll go into their own tub. This is literally a tub of females. Um, Doing some uh, para, what would we call that? Acrobatics of some description. Um, I was gonna say parasailing, I don't know where I got parasailing from. But yeah, uh, you know, these are where we raise our mice essentially. In terms of feeding them, we use Arkwright's dog food as well as, we don't have any bags here, but a, a brand of bag food we get from Aldi. They seem to love it, they do really well on it. We've also got, so here we've got our bins. This one's as you feel the food is empty at the moment. Um, where's the opening to this thing? I'll never find it, there it is. So we also use this, um, by Johnson's. So it's a Johnson's um, hamster treat mix. So it smells really nice actually. I don't know if you can smell that, Joe. It smells very, very fruity. So it's basically dried fruits, um, nuts and seeds, etc. And what we'll do is uh, a couple of times a week, we'll take uh, one of these and Bell's trying to steal their food. Bell, please don't eat their food, you've got your own food. Um, 
we'll take one of these. We have bowls that way we have to get new bowls. We've got little ceramic bowls basically, which I'll just give these for now. We'll tip it into the bowl into one corner, you know, a bit more than that because it usually fills the bar. I just I know they're going to scatter that everywhere. Um, so they get this sort of treat mix once or twice a week. They also then get on top of dog food, they get clippings from veg. So whenever I cook or prepare food, any spare veg goes in there. Any bread that's slightly older, about to go on the turn, they get that. Um, I'll buy specific veg for them as well, just to give them some fresh veg. And we just do that pretty much every day. So every day when I'm feeding the tortoises, for example, etc., I'll come in, uh, I'll just throw some vegetation directly inside the box. Our grapevine is currently a little bit smaller than it used to be. Uh, if you look at the start of the build video, uh, and then you look at the end of the build video, yeah, it got decimated. Um, but I used to do that, so I used to take just literally whole branches, whole vines of, of grape vine. Uh, they eat the stalk, the leaves, everything. So just a little bit of extra nutrition for them here and there, uh, using the, the, obviously the dog food as a staple because we don't really have access to um, Missouri in this kind. I know in America, a lot of the breeders, or rat breeders use Missouri uh, diet. We don't have Missouri diet. So we just do a load of mix and you've got like boxes here of, um, these are just like rabbit pellets. Um, it's just different a variety of different food sources for the rodents. Um, I know a lot of people have asked us about culling. I'm not going to talk about culling just because I don't really like talking about it, I don't really like doing it. Um, all I'll say is they're euthanized and then fed off or frozen if there's excess. Not that we've had to do it yet with the rats because we're still building the colonies up um, and we've got a whole load of new rats coming in. Um, Scott Masco has been good enough to um, you know, provide us with a, a nice quantity of female rats to help boost the colony, um, as well as, as obviously as they reproduce and we've got more and more female rats, we continue to build more and more. But this is it. This is the snack shack in pretty much its completion. The only thing that's missing right now, which I can finally plug in again, is our fan. And honestly, Jay, it doesn't really, it doesn't smell at all in here, does it? No. Um, it genuinely does not smell. We have a friend who has a very, very sensitive nose and usually can't even, uh, breathe in this in this room never mind um well he used to have issues when we used to have them indoors but he was over yesterday and even he although covering his face said that um it wasn't too bad so basically fan stays on in here pretty much 24 7. i will turn it off for a second because it does make noise fan in here in the summer uh, sorry in the winter we'll have an oil heater in here just to take the chill out of the air for them. And obviously the barn door won't be open all the time. It may be left slightly ajar just to allow ventilation. Um, although we do have multiple air bricks in this structure that allow air and it's not perfectly airtight. So there is, when it's windy out there, you can feel the breeze coming in through the top. So there's plenty of air just coming in here and airing it out constantly. But yeah guys, if you enjoyed that video, <laughs> it's been a long one and this has been the main cause of our delay and our lack of presence on social media, especially YouTube um, in recent weeks. But it is done now. I, I think we're, we're over the moon with it, how it turned out. Lots of space to work in here. Uh, nice and airy, doesn't smell. That's how we want to keep it. The rodents are doing well. Um, a lot of these groups were only just set up, so that a lot of them are uh, immature rodents or immature rats. So they will start breeding here relatively soon. They are of that size. Hopefully this will, I mean, the main goal of this is to essentially become self-sufficient. Um, and I think what we'll do is, then one of the, the, the things we wanna do, where are they? Is, because obviously rats cut down the cost of feeding. Ah, oh, here we go. Here's the huskies. So, mm. come lovely. Oh, come lovely. It's all right, love. Um, I do try to socialize the rats and I know some people think I'm crazy because they are, if you will, I mean, their offspring are food. I don't cull any of the breeders unless, you know, to be honest, I prefer letting them die of old age. I think it's the least we can do for them, care for them whilst they live. Um, we are stealing their babies after all. Uh, but yeah, so the idea is to breed certain lines of rats, uh, the huskies, etc., that are quite sought after as pets um, and have a couple colonies perhaps uh, raising up to essentially sell to the pet trade and the idea behind that is that the rats which provide you know rodents to the pet trade to be kept as pets they will then fund the food for the guys in here which will in turn mean this shed will be running 
basically completely free. Uh, they'll be paying for themselves in every way. Uh, we're a bit off that, obviously, because we're only just starting to breed the rodents. But hopefully that's the goal. People have been asking me also, just really quickly, on Maltese. We do have Maltese coming. We have two colonies of Maltese. Not that I intend to be feeding my rodent, my snakes Maltese, but they're here just for um, emergency purposes. If, if, if I need a multi, I have them on hand. Obviously what I'll be doing is just culling uh, the offspring as they get upsized, freezing them, and then at least I have a supply here. Should I, should we need it for some reason, you know, a, a really, really stubborn eater that's gone on a massive fast and we really need to do something. Uh, but that's what these are gonna be used for. This one will be used for raising mice that are born here to a size that we can actually use them or we want to use them. Uh, a couple tubs of Maltese, and then this one here. For now, it's only three. There may be a fourth one coming. We haven't decided on that yet, but at least this one will have um, adult female rats, which we will allow to breed maybe one or two litters, and then retire from breeding. And the, the, the purpose for them will be maternity moms, which will help raise offspring, or help raise, um, let's, say, let's say, for example, these guys have quite large babies. If they were to have a litter now, um, what will norm generally happen is they uh, essentially these guys outcompete the new babies and the pinkies tend to not do so well or actually die just from the fact that these guys just get all the attention uh, so those pinkies what we do is take those pinkies out of there give them to one of the one groups of maternity moms we'll probably keep them in pairs because they do like to be together uh, give them to one of the pairs of maternity moms the maternity moms will then raise them uh, and when they're of size again, we'll take them out, etc. And we'll keep that going. If you have any questions, guys, leave it in the comment section down below. I've rambled on long enough now. Um, let us know what you think of this. Uh, hopefully, we're doing it. We're, we're trying to do it so that we are obviously breeding our own rodents, but at the same time, giving the rodents great lives um, or as, as best of a life we can give them. Trim res with respect, make sure they're looked after, and make sure they're clean um, and they've got everything that they need. So if you've got any questions, pop it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And until the next video, guys, we'll see you then. Bye.